So if I press switch language, you can see that it changes to the next one loaded, or if I press the buttons, it loads to that one button in particular. Pretty good. Hi, I'm Ricky. Today we're on the 11th episode of the Endless Runner series, and in this episode we'll take a look on how to implement a localization system. Do note that this localization isn't suited for holding a lot of dialogues, but if you're working on a game without a lot of text, then it is more than fine. First we're gonna make a class that holds all our languages and categories, then we make a language manager that gets a certain string from that class, and finally we make a script that calls the language manager and puts that string into a certain text component. And we also see how to switch language while in-game. This series is a tutorial based on a game that I made and published called BotVenture. If you want to know how the finished product will look like, do check out that game, link in the description. Okay, so let's start. First thing, let's make the class that we hold all our languages, and I'm just gonna call it language. In here, the first thing we're gonna do is make an enum for all our languages. And for now, I've put English, Italian, and French. We are not gonna translate a lot of stuff, so don't worry. This is mostly just for debugging and testing. The way we're gonna manage all our different lines in the game is like this. First we say for which category or line depends, so for the menu, for the dialogues, for the tutorial, stuff like that. Then for each category we add an array of identifiers, and that identifier leads to another array of strings in which are the translations. So to do that we're gonna make a lot of classes, but since these classes are gonna hold very little data inside them, we can actually just make these classes inside this script. So let's make a new class, and I'm gonna call it line category class. And in here, let's make an enum for all, all different categories. For now, I've just put these three as an example. Then let's make an instance of this enum. And now let's make an array of line category class in our language class. For now, I'm just making everything public. We'll deal with it later. Now, because we're making line category class inside this very own script, we have to serialize it. So we have to tell the script to serialize this class. So we just add the system.serializable attribute. Okay, let's see how it looks in Unity. In here, let's make a new empty object for our language, because much like audio and game, language is a very different part of our game. So let's make a new empty object. Okay, and in here you can see we have our categories array, and I'm just gonna say three. And now for each category, I'm gonna set the right enum. And now together with the enum, we also want to make an array for keys, so a way to know which translation we want, and then also an array of strings, which will actually hold all our translations. So let's go back to the script. Okay, and let's make another class, and I'm gonna call it line ID class. In here, let's put a string that will act as an identifier. And finally, we want an array of strings for all our translations. But we also want to know to which language each translation belongs to. So we actually have to make another class, and this will be the final one, I promise, and I'm gonna call it translation. In here, I make an instance of the enum language, and finally, the string containing the translation. Now let's mark both translation and line ID class with system serializable. And let's also make an array of translation in our line ID class. And let's also make an array of line ID class in line category class. Okay, and uh, let's see how it looks in Unity. Also one thing, do not compile all the language translation right now, because we're gonna reset the script very soon, so don't, don't start translating already. Okay, so we have our three different categories, I'm gonna collapse these ones. Now if I open menu, you can see that I have another array, I'm gonna set it to two. And now we have two line IDs, and an ID is something that I use to get a specific value. So for example, let's say that we want to make the translations for add money and play. Well, for add money, I'm gonna say that the ID is add money. And then in the translations, I'm gonna put three translations because we have three languages. 
And then for each translation, I'm going to set it in enum. And I'm also going to say to what it matches to. So in English, it's going to be add money. In Italian, it's going to be aggiungi monete. And in French, I don't know, so I'm just going to say French money. Okay, and that's one line. Now let's say I want to make the play translation. Well, I just go to the next element. I'm going to say play. Again, set it to three because we have three languages. And I'm going to put all the translations for play. And that's it. Now in the language manager, we're just going to get a specific string in our language script by finding a specific category. So whether it's a dialogue or a menu or a tutorial, and then a specific string for our line ID. So to know what we are translating and of course the current language that it's loaded. Okay, but one thing that you can do to make things a bit more easy on the eyes is to make these lines of text into text boxes. To do so, let's go back to our script. And in here, on the public string line, let's add the attribute text area. And as you can see, things are now a bit more clear. Okay, and now let's make our language manager. Okay, and remember when I told you that we are going to reset our script? Well, that's because we want to make an instance of our language inside here. So instead of having our language to be serialized as a component, we're just going to serialize it as an instance inside this language manager. So let's make an instance. And now let's go back to our language and let's serialize also the main class. And last thing, to actually serialize this class, we have to remove the model behavior inheritance. Now let's go back to Unity. And as you can see, now the language isn't loaded properly. That's because we removed the model behavior. So let's remove it and let's add language manager. And as you can see, it is now serialized. Perfect. Do note that using an in-game editor for localization, if you mess up something and you have to change the main logic behind all this language system, everything that you've put into the translation is likely to be cancelled. So be extra careful when you change the original code. My advice is to build up the localization system at the start of your development journey, but translate everything at the end, when you're sure that you're not going to change anything. Also, when you're doing translation, be sure to save every time, and if something bad happens, just close and reopen the editor. Okay, but now let's go in our language manager, and let's make a function that gets us a specific string. And I'm going to call this function a public string get line. In here, we want to search into our language script, and look inside all these nested arrays and look for the right string. To do that, we're just going to use the array.find function multiple times. So if you go in our language, the first thing that you want to check is the right categories array with the right line category. Then we want to know the right lines array, and in here we want to search through the lines array where the line ID is the one that we want to, and finally, in our translations array, we want to search for the correct language. Okay, so what we need is a language, a category, and a string. So let's go back to our function, and for the language, I'm just going to make a new value called current language. While for the category and the string, we're just going to use parameters. Okay, and now let's make a line category class with array.find. And remember that Array.Find uses the system library. I won't go into detail how the Array.Find function works because I've done that in the last episode, I think. Link in the description if you want to know more about this. But for now, I'm just going to go through. Okay, and this was a bit longer than expected, probably due to the zoom, but that's okay. What we're doing is looking into our language, looking into this array right here and we're searching for the right category and we're matching that category to the one in our parameter now we're just going to have to do the same thing for the two other classes so now we have to look for the right line id so we are basically going to copy and paste this function but with different values Okay, and finally we look for the right translation given our current language.
OK. And lastly, we want to return the string that we found. So we just say return write translation dot line. And that's it. That's our main logic. Now in the next class, we're just going to call this function and get the string that we want. But before we go any further, let's clear some things up. For now, I've made everything public to make things faster. We actually have to be very careful with those things. So for language and current language, we're just going to use serialized and private. In our language class, however, it's going to be a bit more complicated. The enum is fine to be public because it can't be set from anywhere other than when you are declaring it. But for everything else, we don't want things to be public. We want them to be private. But at the same time, we also want them to be serialized. And you can't have a value with properties that it's also serialized. So we're going to use a bit of a workaround with properties. So let's make a duplicate of this value. And for the duplicate, we're going to mark it with an underscore. And we're going to add properties. But I'm just going to add the get property. And instead of adding a modifier like public or private, I'm going to say that this value, when it's read, it actually returns the original. So categories. To do that, we just say return and then the name of value. Finally, we make the original value private and serialized. And that's it. This way, we have a value that is private, it's serialized, but it can also be read from anywhere. You can read this value from anywhere because you have this other value that is public that when you try to read from it, it actually gives you the original value. And this value, because you can't really read from it, and you also can't set it because there is no setter, it doesn't really exist. So that's a workaround to have a value that is serialized, that is private, but public in the get. Okay, I'm just going to repeat this process for all the values that we need to remake. Okay, and that's it. You can, uh, of course, take a look at what I've done here. And another thing you can do is actually replace all these classes with structs. If you don't know, a struct is basically the same thing as a class, but it can't derive from anything. And in our case, we aren't deriving from anything, so it makes sense to use structs, because structs are a lot more efficient. To replace a class with a struct, it's very easy, you just change the name. And that's it. Now let's go back to our language manager. And here we have to replace all the values that before were public with their duplicates. So we just have to add the underscores. And that's it. We can now go to the final part of the localization, which should be our text changer. So let's go to Unity and let's make this new text changer. And here we want a reference to a text component that we want to change. And for that, I'm just going to derive from TextMesh Pro and I'm going to get a text in the awake method. And I'm going to call the text text to change. Okay, and now let's make a new public void function called update text. In here, we just call the language manager, call the function get line, and set the string to our text to change text. To call our language manager, though, we have to make a singleton. So let's go in our language manager and let's do that. While we are here, let's also switch the current language at the top. Good. Back in our text changer, let's call our text to change. And let's call the getLine function. We also have to pass in two parameters, so let's make these two new values in our class. And I'm just going to add in these parameters. And we are good. Now we just need to call this update text function. And we could just update text in the awake method, but I actually want to use the onEnable method. onEnable is called pretty much at the same time as awake, but it's also called whenever the game object is deactivated and activated again. And we need this because let's say the game object is deactivated and then we change the language. When this game object activates again, we want the text to update to the new language. And lastly, one thing is a problem with our singleton. 
But the way Unity works, it may happen that this unenable function is called before or awake in our singleton. So to avoid that, in the update text function, let's just check if the singleton has already been made. And if it has been made, we just call the function, else we want to call update text function again in the next frame. And to call a function in the next frame, what we can do is use a function called invoke. We're just gonna fit in our update text as a string and then set a time delay. And in our case, we want just one frame. So I'm gonna say 0 0.00001. Invoke is a very easy way to make a quarantine that isn't really a quarantine. Also, don't worry, it's not gonna be actually rendered that the text changes in the first frame of the game. Okay, but let's test this localization. Let's go back to Unity. I'm gonna make the add money and play translations again that I already made before. And now I'm gonna add the text changer component to our text. In here we just need to say to which category the line belongs to and then the corresponding line. And that's it. Let's see if it works. Okay, you can see that nothing is happening, so it works. Let's try change the language. So I'm just gonna set it to Italian. Now if we hit play, you can see that it goes to Italian. And if I try and change the language to French, I'm gonna disable object and activate it again, you can see that it translates. Now what we have to do is make a function that changes the language and then updates all text in game. So let's close this, let's go back to our language manager. In here, let's make a public void switch language. And for changing language, there are two options. We can change a language by going up in one in our array, so if we have three languages, we just go English, Italian, French, English, Italian, French, English, Italian, French, and so on. Or we can choose which language to load, much like in a system where we have different flags and each flag, when you press it, it changes the language to that flag in particular. For now, we're just gonna do the former. In here, we want to know how many languages we have, and to do it, we're gonna have to know the length of our language array. Or rather, it's not very an array, but it's an enum. But enum are very much like arrays. So we make an int for our language length. And to get the length of an enum, it's kind of a weird syntax and it uses the system library. And that's it. Do note that all this, it's much like going here and say language.length, just like this. It's exactly the same thing, but you need a specific syntax for it, which is this one right here. Okay, and now that we know the maximum capacity of our languages, we just take our current language, add one, and then see if we have exceeded the maximum capacity. And if we have, we just go to zero. So we take our current language, cast it into an int, and then see if that plus one is minor than the length of our languages. If it is, we just add our language, if it isn't, then we just say that our current language is the first in our array. And finally, we want to update all texts in game. So let's actually make a new function and I'm gonna call it update all texts. In here, I'm gonna make a text changer array with find objects of type. Then for each value in this array, we're just gonna call the update text function. Finally, we call update all text when we switch language. Okay, and let's go in Unity and test this. I'm gonna make a new temporary button just to switch language. I don't want this button to be here at the end of the game. This is temporary, I've just named it for safety reasons. Now in the event, I'm just gonna remove these ones and put in our update, or rather a switch language function. And I'm also gonna remove the text changer component. Okay, and let's test this. Okay, right now we are in Italian. If I press switch, we go to French. Press again, we go to English. 
if I remove one of the texts, switch the language, now we're in English. If I then open again the text, it's already translated. Very good. Okay, and finally, the last thing I want to do is have a bit of a safety net in case we put a wrong value. I'm talking about our line identifier, of course. So let's go to our script, and in our language manager, in our getLine function, we want to know whether the line that we're getting actually exists or not. And we want to know whether the line exists or not before we actually reach it. So to do that, we're going to use something called try and catch. Try and catch is a very good way to handle exceptions. So if something bad happens, what we can do is put all this code in the try. And if there is an exception, so if there's something bad that happened, then you just say return placeholder. And I'm also going to put a debug log warning saying that the translation is missing. Finally, because we're using return, we don't need to use also throw. And I forgot I also have to build this in here at the end. Pretty good. So now if you go to Unity and we put a wrong value for line ID, so like this, if we hit play, you can see that we get an error in the console, but the game doesn't actually stop. So even if we have a missing translation, the game still goes and we know what is happening. Okay, and finally, let's make the other version of changing the language. So let's make different flags for each language. So let's go in our language manager script and let's make a new public void function to change our language. And for this function, we're gonna get a string parameter. Now, what we want to do is convert this string into an enum. So we're gonna call this function through a button and the button is gonna require a string. We can't actually use enum in a button, so we're gonna have to stick with strings. We take the string parameter, try and convert it into an enum, and then set our current language to that enum. To convert from string to enum, we're gonna use a function called try parse. In here, we give it the string that we want to convert. Then we tell it whether we want to ignore case sensitivity, so I'm gonna say true. And finally, we have to put an out result. So we have to say, let's put the result of this conversion into a new value. And finally, this function returns a boolean. And in that boolean, it tells us whether the conversion was successful or not. Now, if the boolean is true, so if the conversion was successful, we change our current language to this new result. If it wasn't successful, then it means that we put a wrong parameter and I'm gonna throw in a debug log warning. And at the end, I'm gonna call the update all text function. Much like for a switch language. Okay, and let's try it in Unity by making new buttons. Okay, and I've made two temporary buttons just for testing this new function. They are not gonna be there at the end of the game. And as you may have seen, I've put a right value for Italian, IT, but I put a wrong value for English. Instead of say EN, I say ENG. So let's try it. And right now we're in Italian. If I go to English, you can see that it gives me an error saying wrong string format. If I change it to actually saying English, if I press it, you can see that everything translates Italian, it goes back to Italian. Perfect. And it doesn't even interfere with our current switch language. So, very cool. Okay, and that's it for this video. I hope you have learned a lot. If you want to know how the finished product will look like, check out my game. It's called Boat Venture. It's free on the Play Store, link in the description. In the new episode, we make a new interesting enemy. And that will be a fog that holds part of the screen. If you like this content and you want more, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.